Are you thinking about planning a trip to the Universal Orlando Resort? If you are, then in this video, I'm going to share with you everything you need to know about staying on property, including all the benefits and help you determine if you can squeeze it into your budget or not. Over 25 million people visit Universal Orlando each year, and that number keeps growing. And once you experience what this amazing place offers, you too will know why more and more people are spending more time here than over at Disney. Now for a quick overview of the Universal Orlando Resort. It consists of three different theme parks, Universal Studios Florida, Islands of Adventure, and the Volcano Bay Water Theme Park. Then you have the Entertainment District City Walk that features restaurants, mini golf, a movie theater, and a ton of nightlife. Six of the eight Universal Hotels are located within a short walk of all of the theme parks and City Walk. With the two newest hotels to Universal Orlando being the Value Hotels, which are Universal's Endless Summer Resort, Surfside Inn and Suites, and Universal's Endless Summer Resort, Dockside Inn and Suites. These hotels are located about a mile away just across I-4 and it only takes a few minutes if you're driving or taking the shuttle that runs from these resorts to City Walk. If you are looking to stay on Universal property and want the least expensive one, then Dockside Resort is it. And right next door, Surfside usually costs a little bit more each night. But you honestly cannot beat the value that you get when you stay at these two hotels because you'll get to enjoy the newest, nicest, and cleanest hotels along the famous International Drive. Now, if you would like to see some other great International Drive hotel options, then be sure to check out my other very informative video, as you see here, because I give you the rundown on the top 10 places to stay along International Drive. And for your convenience, you can find the link for that video in the description. Universal Orlando divides their hotels up into four categories. We already covered the value hotels, Universal's Endless Summer Resort, Surfside Inn & Suites, and Universal's Endless Summer Resort, Dockside Inn & Suites. So let's take a look at the prime value hotels, which are located even closer to the theme parks, where you can either walk or take a shuttle to City Walk and the parks. If you want some killer views within walking distance from all the action, then staying at Universal's Adventura Hotel is definitely the way to go. This perfectly priced hotel offers everything you would expect to find at a Universal Orlando Resort Hotel, but just in more of a tower form. While I will say, if you're visiting with kids, then I would look at staying at any of the other Universal Orlando hotels since Adventura is more adult oriented in my opinion. Not to mention, but the hotel offers the smallest pool out of them all. Now, if you do have young kids who, like ours, love the water, then you have to look into staying at Universal's Cabana Bay Beach Resort, which is the largest hotel on property. You are going to love this tropical retro-themed hotel where everything is themed to the 1950s and 60s. Staying at Cabana Bay will really enhance your Universal Orlando vacation. For example, you're going to find a 10-lane bowling alley called Galaxy Bowl that's right in the middle of this hotel. As for the pools, well, you're going to love the Cabana and Lazy River Courtyard. These two areas feature a wonderful Lazy River, a giant-sized pool that offers a great water slide for the kids, and so much more, providing water lovers countless hours of fun in the sun. Another benefit about staying at Cabana Bay Beach Resort is that it's located right next to Volcano Bay. And if you want rooms overlooking Universal's water park, then for a small additional fee, you can have this view. Now real fast, I think it's very important for you to know that there is no paid promotion from Universal Orlando for this video. These are just my thoughts and opinions from someone who worked with the company at the on-site hotels for over two years. The whole idea of this video is to help you learn about new stuff and the resorts, which in the end makes you and your family have a better overall vacation and that makes me the happiest. So if you're finding this video to be helpful, then all I ask you to do is give it a thumbs up. That is by far the best way you can help the channel, and I really do appreciate each one. So far, there's only one preferred hotel that's located at Universal Orlando Resort, and that is the Lowe's Sapphire Falls. 
And if you're looking at the middle of the pack in terms of pricing and benefits, then Sapphire might be the best way for you to go. You're going to find a resort that offers one of the best pools around, mixed in with a tropical lush landscape, amazing rooms, and so much more. Sapphire Falls is located within walking distance of CityWalk and the theme parks, or you do have the option of riding over to CityWalk on the water taxi. And finally, the premier hotels, which are the Lowe's Royal Pacific Resort, the Hard Rock Hotel, and Lowe's Portofino Bay. Now you might be wondering what the difference is between each of these beautiful properties from the other ones I just mentioned, and there are a few noticeable ones that I'm gonna go over, but mainly the cost. For example, where a room at Dockside or Surfside would cost you around, let's say $150 a night on average, for the same night, that rate would be north of $450 at the three premier hotels. Now, why is that? Well, these are the nicest hotels on property and they also offer the Universal Express Pass Unlimited, which means that every guest in your hotel room is able to skip the line for every attraction as much as they want at the theme parks. But note, at the time of this video, every attraction at Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure does offer the Express Pass, except the Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure at Islands of Adventure. Now, while you might think that spending over $450 a night on a hotel room is ridiculous, and I get it because it does sound ridiculous, the value is really there and it's 100% worth it. And before you call me crazy, let me explain. The Universal Express Pass starts out at $89.99 per person and inflates to $349 per person during peak days. Now that price is per person and per day. Now for a minimal additional cost, you can add the Express Pass Unlimited option and these prices range from $99 to $379 per person. Again, this is pricing for one park per day. If you purchase the park to park tickets, so you're able to experience both parks in the same day, since they're right next to each other, and you'll get to experience the Hogwarts Express train ride, then you'll need to pay even more money for the park to park express pass option. And these prices start out at $104.99 for one time per attraction. And at the time of this video, these prices start out at $134.99 per person per day, but that's unlimited. Now obviously these prices are subject to change and you have to take into account that the time of the year and the day you choose is very dependent of the price. This is why it's very important for you to take a few minutes of your day and watch this video that I created where I tell you the best times to visit the Florida theme parks, whether that is Disney, SeaWorld, Busch Gardens, Tampa, and of course, Universal Orlando. And you can find that link to that video in the description. So back to the value of the Premier Hotels. Let's take a look at a three night stay during the middle of May at the Royal Pacific Resort, which is usually always the cheaper of the three. A Thursday through Sunday stay, you are looking at around $450 a night. But remember, this also includes the unlimited Park to Park Express Pass. And during that same weekend, the price is around $150 per person on average. But by staying at either the Portofino, Hard Rock, or Royal Pacific, you'll get the Express Pass Unlimited for the whole length of stay. All you need is just theme park tickets. Now I've never been great at math, but buying four Express Passes at a minimal cost of let's say $150 each, and I'm being very generous on that number, would bring it to $600 per day just to skip the lines. And remember, that is per day. So if you visit Universal for two days and buy the Express Pass, then you have to double that number. Now by paying the $450 on average a night, you'll get the Express Pass Unlimited for every day you're at the resort, including the days you check in and out. Again, all you need is a theme park ticket. So when you add up the numbers, it really does make sense to at least look at staying at the Royal Pacific, Hard Rock, and the Portofino Hotel. As for each hotel, the Hard Rock Hotel is the closest one to the entrance of Universal Studios Florida, and this hotel offers a great vibe and one of the most fun pool areas out of all the resorts. And I gotta say, I really do love the water slide at Hard Rock. Kids and adults really do love everything about Hard Rock Hotel. The Portofino Bay, which is usually always the most expensive hotel at Universal Orlando, really is something that everyone needs to check out whether you're staying there or not. At least go walk around this place because it feels as if you're really walking through an Italian seaside town. 
you're gonna find three pools located at this beautiful hotel, plus delicious restaurants and very nice rooms. And over at the Royal Pacific, you're gonna love being a five minute walk to the entrance of Islands of Adventure. You are going to find a very beachy Hawaiian theme that will make you fall in love with staying here for your future Universal Orlando vacations. And best of all, all three of the premier hotels have the water taxi amenity where you get to ride to and from City Walk via a boat and this just adds to the vacation feeling. The biggest benefit of staying at a Universal Orlando hotel is that you don't ever have to drive to the parks. Especially since you're already paying for parking at the hotel, which is usually around $20 a night or so. So don't go to the parking garage and pay $25 or $30, whatever it costs, to park there. All you have to do is utilize the transportation the hotel offers to get you to and from the parks, whether that is the resort shuttle or the water taxi. And again, this will save you money from having to pay for parking twice. But the main benefit of this is that you do not have to deal with the parking garage for Universal Orlando and all the traffic that comes with that. Also, by staying on property, you do get early park admission. This amazing benefit begins one hour prior to regularly scheduled park opening to either Universal Studios Florida or Universal's Islands of Adventure. You're going to be able to experience certain attractions at each of the parks an hour before regular park visitors get to. Trust me, the lines will be much shorter then than they will be once the park opens. I just recommend you get into the park right as early entry starts. While you will find each hotel offers restaurants, bars, and other great forms of entertainment and amenities, it's the memories that you will create with your family that matters the most. So in my opinion, staying at a Universal Orlando hotel is totally worth it, and I hope that this video has been beneficial for you. Have you ever stayed at Universal Orlando before? If so, which hotel is your favorite? Be sure to let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching and remember to be adventurous, spontaneous, and most importantly, never stop traveling.